Hey everybody, welcome to Wednesday. It's Wellness Wednesday, and this is going to be a tough one for me to be all zen, because I'm pissed off this week. Um, and I'm pissed off because I don't like bullies. And there's been a lot of bullying online in the gaming space of late masquerading as activism. And, you know, some of the games media has jumped on that bandwagon because it's a slow news cycle. It's February in video games. Nothing's happening. Um, so they look for stuff that's going to drive clickbaity traffic to their site. So it's why isn't Chun-Li in Mortal Kombat and bullshit bullying. Um, there's a reason I, I, I don't try to work for gaming services right now. I cannot stand this crap. But I want to talk about what bullying does to bystanders. Because there's an important part of this dynamic that needs to be understood so it's less effective. Okay. When a developer gets attacked, whether indie or AAA, the most likely outcome isn't that they lose their job or their game bombs or, or whatever. I mean, usually any kind of attention, especially in indie, only helps the title. I mean, look at Cyberpunk, right? They had a gargantuan launch. Unfortunately, the game was buggy as shit and, and not terribly well designed on top of that. But the actual interest in the game was intense and part of that was because of controversy and every other industry knows that i mean yeah okay you don't want kids entertainers to have sex scandals but plenty of musical artists and even actors political figures controversy works for them The, the person being targeted in the long run, unless they have a pre-existing mental health condition that is exacerbated, and in gaming, that's highly likely. So I don't want to minimize that. But career-wise, as long as they don't have a breakdown, it doesn't really harm them because they go and they put out their game and if the game's good, that's all anybody remembers. They think, oh, that was stupid, only to fall prey to do it again. The... The real impact, and it's designed to do this, is on the bystanders. Bullying doesn't just impact the person being picked on. It lets people seeing the bullying know, step out of line and this could happen to you, right? It causes people to, to self-censor, to pull back, to not stick their head up, because they don't want to be next. And the reason this is especially effective in, in video games is because, you know, for one, especially in indie dev, they don't have, you know, media coordinators. And I don't know if you watched the Gina Carano, Ben Shapiro interview, but they were talking about like LGBTQ community experts and media experts. And they have all these resources in the, the Disney ecosystem that, you know, celebrities can utilize to navigate PR. And indie dev doesn't have that. And quite frankly, neither do most AAA devs. The margins in video games just aren't as big as film and television, you know. Um, but... It's the people that don't want to be next that's the issue. And I think it's very, very important to understand that. Because we've gotten into this cycle of games, in games, in, in the gaming community, where, because so many people who, who develop a love for video games uh, have been bullied. L less so now because gaming is a lot more mainstream, but people on the older end of the spectrum, and maybe I shouldn't say that. I mean, bullying seems so rampant that people are more likely to have been a victim of it than not, right? But it, it it's next level for old nerds like me. Like, it was not cool to like this stuff. It was not cool to be smart. It seems like in certain pockets of North America, it's still not cool to be smart. So who knows? I can only speak from my own experience. But I, 
I have detected a lot of people who show signs that when they see someone being this week's target, they take it very personally. It's like they're reliving a past trauma that somebody else, you know, it's their turn in the barrel this week. It's reminding them of when they were picked on and that they have this really intense reaction. And it's totally understandable. That is exactly what these very public bullying tactics are intended to do. They're intended to pressurize an environment to make people do the things the bullies want them to do. Now, what a lot of people do is go, I'm not going to let you. I'm going to fight back. And what happens in gaming is that fighting back is then turned around and used as proof of harassment. And that's a really difficult element of so many of these things happening online instead of face to face. Because, you know, what's one person's perception of fighting back is another person's harassment. Um, that's an intractable problem right now. Because the people who claim to be anti-harassment advocates are also people who are advocating against harassment using call-out culture. If you notice my pause, like I threw up in my mouth a little, hopefully you understand why the fact that call-out culture is essentially haranguing someone until they change their mind somehow. Call out culture, or calling out, the act of calling out on a mass scale is harassment, right? It's one thing to say to somebody, this isn't okay, here's a reasoned argument why. That's fair game, right? But if the entire tactic is 5,000 of my closest friends also think you're wrong, shut up, biatch, right? That's harassment. That is harassing someone into silence. There's no way around it. Now, the problem is that game devs are so bombarded by feedback that you have to scream to be heard a lot of the time. It was funny because I recently found out that they, they took the damn cross out of the synagogue in The Last of Us 2. Something I'd been complaining about for ages. Now, apparently they took it out quite some time ago, but because they didn't announce the change, somebody actually went back into the game and finally told me, oh, they took it out. But unlike other things where they make this big announcement and, the, and this big apology and all that stuff, no, they just quietly changed the thing in the game, which I'm very happy about because that I found that legit disturbing. But I'm, I'm not one of the cool kids that they get performative points for showing, look, we're listening to women, right? I don't know what it is about me that I don't rank on that victimhood chart. I'm happy I don't rank on that victimhood chart because I would rather be a leader than a victim. And just because you've been a victim of something doesn't mean you have to self-identify as a victim, as part of your character, you know, the, the ironic thing is the people who scream loudest about being damsels in distress make quite a bit of money on playing the damsel in distress. I don't do that. And so I'm, I guess I'm kind of scary. And, you know, part of the reason, I think, that they try to pretend I don't exist, though it's cracking, it's cracking, they can't pretend I totally don't exist anymore. This is exciting, okay? But I, 
I I actually do threaten this hierarchy, this this cliquish hierarchy that that involves some pockets of gaming. Because I don't do that, because there's no easy answer, because it's not part of the cycle. I actually do want things changed in a meaningful way. And I understand why people don't like that, you know? But I've also made it pretty clear that I can't be bullied. And I don't change what I do. I don't descend into the morass with people. I continue to make logical as best I can. I still want to be entertaining, right? Like I don't want to be dry and bland and boring and speak in a monotone. But th there's a logical core to what I do. And I just keep running my race. And, you know, yeah, that means I don't have the traffic of a drama channel because the YouTube algorithm sucks, but I'm respected. And that's not something that bullies know how to combat. Because people have to give you begrudging respect, unless they're sociopaths. People have to give you begrudging respect even when they don't like you. And so even when the call-out bullies make me seem unlikable, people still respect me, right? They may tell me off briefly. People may put me on a block list. But I, I know that even those people that have me blocked, they still hate watching my videos. And then I watch my concepts slowly seep into their content. So the bullying doesn't work. And... The best thing you can do when a developer is under the gun and you're really upset about it because you know what that's like is to send calm messages of support, but don't get down in the muck. Don't start screaming and yelling. Don't start throwing bombs. Don't start saying censorship. Don't start saying all that stuff. Just, you know... The, the thing that seemed to land this week, it made it on the freaking Daily Dot, of all things. But when I said something was a non-story, and that seemed to really piss them off, I think because it's true. These game dev made a video six years ago stories, these aren't news in, in most... In most spheres of reporting, that would never get past an editor, you know, because you're just muddying someone up for what, you know, something they said six years ago that that was what? Does it violate their brand? Is it, you know, like, what is the story? So what? You know, it's it's Kevin Hart and the Oscars all over again. It's James Gunn all over again. And, and people have, you know, subsequently realized those, those guys were wrong. That's why Disney hired them back. You know, the fact that Kevin Hart had to quit the Oscars over 10-year-old tweets was ridiculous. Gaming's the only space that hasn't seemed to move beyond that. And it's because, unfortunately, the, the quality of our... It's not even news. It's it's yellow journalism. Like the quality of it, the fact that that the industry is is rumors make much more money than factual reporting. Why? Because everybody gets the factual reporting at the exact same time. Rumors, you know, blow up your SEO because you're the only one reporting on it. Unless somebody does it on Twitter and then everybody reads about it. But um, if you've got one of these things that you're first to report and then everybody just mirrors what you did with no additional reporting, that's great for your traffic, right? So these sites don't even recognize that they're making people miserable because they're so busy chasing traffic. And that's just the reality that we live in right now. There's nothing we as individuals can do about it. What we can do about it is make our reactions as, as least likely as possible not to play their game. 
they go negative, go positive, you know, um, they try to shame you. Don't let them, you know, shame's a funny thing. They can try to shame you. You don't have to feel it easier said than done. I know, you know, the older I get, like, I, I think about how insecure I was in, like, my teens and 20s and, you know, now <laughs> the other side of 40. I'm like, geez, that was a shitty way to live. And it, it's something that, um, it's something that does come with age. It's something that gets a lot easier with age. And that's why it's unfortunate that there's so much ageism in gaming because, you know, a, a few people in their 50s and 60s would really help the climate in, in teams because, like, all right. All right, this will happen before. This will happen again. Everybody take a breath. This is not the end of the world. You have to have that experience to show that leadership. They're out there. It's just, you know, the ageism in gaming is real. And so everybody acts like teenagers because there are a bunch of traumatized 20 and 30 somethings that haven't gotten over their teenage years. And you can see it based on the behavior. Right. You can you can see it. Working on your own trauma helps. There's no substitute for experience. I do find it useful to actually look back on games that were put through the grinder and personalities that were put through the grinder. And not think about the one person, like the one Gina Carano that actually got fired because she handled it badly. And think of all the other people that went through some scandal of the day and just kept going. You know, you, you probably can't think of them because they don't even rank. But I used to work, in, <laughs> I used to work in music programming. There was always some crazy scandal. There was always some, oh my God, can you believe they said that? I mean, look at all the beefs in hip hop, right? They keep going on. They keep making money. They don't get fired for having opinions. And Twitter only has the power that people in companies allow it to have. Yes, people may think you're shit. Trust me, I've been through the ringer myself multiple times. I've been called every single nasty thing in the book. The great thing about being called a bunch of names is that people call you so many names, the names cancel each other out, right? Like, I got called too sensitive about sexism and then okay with sexism three days apart. People see that for the absurdity as it is, right? And unfortunately, I've only been able to find this Zen by going through it over and over and over again and now having the XP leveling up in the cancellation attempts. And so, you know, it's just like, just keep running your race. If you don't give them ammunition, this will go away. Like, I'm just so used to it by now. And I'm hoping by talking about this that other people will find it less scary. Because I admit, the, the, the worst part about these things for me is seeing how much it legitimately ex uh, upsets people who observe it. The people observing it, the bystanders to it, seem more upset than the people who are on the receiving end of it because the people on the receiving end of it have the support of their companies and they've been reassured privately that everything's okay and all that stuff, you know, that sort of thing. Just, you know, keep your mouth shut. It'll be fine, which is usually what they tell you. Just shut up, do your job. This will burn out. That's the advice I've been given. But the people who see it are so upset. And you have to keep a confidence. You can't tell them what the behind the, because, because, you don't know what they're going to say. You don't know what they're going to tell. And so you just have to sit there and watch them get vicariously traumatized by 
what they're observing happening to another person. And so I just, you know, I go out of my way to not be that pitiable creature that seems to be beating, being beaten up on. But you know what? Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes it's just your turn. And that's the thing. If you would try to achieve anything, it will be your turn sometimes. But you know what? The first time it happens, it's terrifying. It's awful. It feels life ending. Second time, still feels pretty life ending. Third time, it gets easier. Fourth time, the people are going, oh my God, I couldn't get pet. You will. Okay. You will. You're stronger than you think you are. Um, you know, get, get your own mental health house in order. Work on your resilience. Do the, the stuff I've done in other videos. You will be okay. It's just mean words. The only time the mean words really land is if they're hitting something pre-existing. And that's very hard and that's not your fault. But it is better to make an attempt and draw the ire of the online mob than to sit there paralyzed with fear and not make anything. When you do that calculus, the choice seems seems simple, even if it's not easy, right? And so I, I really hope that everybody who is sitting there scared right now, take baby steps towards doing, doing something. We, we need to break the hold these bullies have on this community. And nobody's going to do that for us but us. You know, fortunately, these these websites are, are less powerful than they once were because they just shit on everybody, right? Like everybody gets crapped on at some point. So um, it's just the cost of doing business. Please make your art. Please make your stuff. Please make your invention. Because, you know, not only do you not do the things only you can do, but the world is less bright because these bullies stole your light. And again, I'm not blaming anybody. This is motivational. This is if, if it helps you to overcome the understandable fear of these people. That's what it's intended to do. Because, I mean, I know at this point they're more afraid of me than I am of them. Because I, I'm, I'm, I'm not terribly afraid of them. <laughs> you know, um, I know who I am and I know what I think and I know what I believe. And you know who you are deep down inside. You know, you know who you are and you know what you think and you know who you believe. You know what you believe. They can't take that from you. They might be able to hide it with a lot of screaming. But they can't take that from you. So let's talk. I want to hear, even if you guys want to just comment on why this stuff makes you so afraid, I'm good with that. Let's just talk. Let's get it out. Let's diffuse this fear. Because I'm bored. I'm bored of this. I'm so bored. And I hate being bored. I hate being bored more than I hate being pissed off. And I hate being pissed off more than I hate The Sims. All right, that's time to wrap it up. Oh, I didn't do Patreon. If you like this sort of thing, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash K. Thanks for watching.